Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, right off the bat, I think we're having a little bit of uh, technical issues. So can you just uh, talk? No, yeah, it seems to be dark. No. Bonjour no, à tous. I think we're back. Oh, bonjour yeah. à tous. Salut en Alchiri. Uh, bienvenue donc au direct à Facebook. On va on à la Tuya El Sendo and Facebook, the Langfest. Welcome to the uh, Langfest Facebook Live. So, uh, well, today we have the pleasure of uh, uh, meeting virtually uh, with uh, Peter Balaj and E.T. Uh, Diaz, one of the co-head organizers of uh, Polyglot Gathering that I've had the pleasure to attend, uh, well, twice already, uh, last year and the year before. And uh, it's a very crowded uh, Facebook Live today because not only do we have myself, Joey, and Tetsu, we also have Sabrina, who is head of uh, speaker relations at Langfest. So it's uh, basically a team to team and, meeting uh, almost. Uh, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's uh, it's a great first, but I think it's, it's going to work well. So, uh, well, I mean, before. Uh, I guess letting uh, uh, our uh, uh, polyglot gathering uh, organizers uh, talk a little bit about their event. Uh, I think uh, it's the first time, right? I mean, we had uh, a meeting with Lydia last year, but that we're, we're doing this uh, with uh, Peter, who's been in event organizing, including in the Esperanto world, for now, what, a dozen years? So he has lots of experience. Uh, you can maybe tell us a little bit about that. So. Uh, so that's it. I mean, uh, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you start and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, why you're doing this now for the third time in Bratislava. I believe it's the fifth edition in total. Uh, oh, okay. So no, I mean, uh, I guess <laughs> I just let you uh, let you go ahead and uh, and tell us a little bit about how how you came to to be doing this uh, like we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So shall I start? Why not? Okay, uh, so from uh, my point of view, it was, let's say, the accident, accidentally organizing uh, the, the event, as I personally know or I knew uh, Chuck and, and you did and the organizers of the first three rounds of Polyglot Gathering in Berlin. And uh, they already had some other occupations and, and uh, other projects to, to do. And the and, uh, gathering actually uh, needed like a new place with, with more uh, space for for some uh, people because the, the Berlin was maximum 350 I guess and there was already a bigger demand uh, for, for the gathering uh, so they asked me uh, as I was already known uh, by them uh, as an organizer of several uh, international Esperanto meetings so they just we talked if if we could like take uh, responsibility to organize the, let's say the next rounds of polyglot gathering as it would be pity to to leave, let it let it be uh, just just to, to die such such a good uh, idea of, of the gathering and uh, so I asked my team if they would uh, be uh, with me and with my colleagues if we are uh, courage and, and crazy enough to organize the <laughs> gathering and, and they say yes. So that's actually the uh, how, how this, this whole happened. And uh, now it will be already the sixth uh, gathering uh, uh, in total and the third one in, in Bratislava. Uh, so that's basically the, 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 the basic idea. Yitka, you want to add something? Um, yes, well, I must uh, totally agree that, uh, yeah, I, for example, it's quite funny in my case because I live in Berlin and for the first three years, the gathering was taking place in here, but I didn't even know. So the first gathering that I attended was paradoxically actually the one in Bratislava. So I can imagine that there are still so many polyglots out there who are not attending any of our events, you know, not the polyglot conference, not the polyglot gathering, not the Langfest and they still would love to attend. So we That's are right. really every year trying to reach these people and encourage them to come because it can be really life-changing for many of them as it was for many of us as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ironies like that. Like, uh, it so happens that uh, 
uh, the year that uh, Langfest was created, well, first it was uh, it was with Tetsu, Tetsu and Joy, and I learned about the event's uh, future existence before the first edition through Lydia, and it was going to happen in my own city. I didn't know, and she told me one day, but do you know there's going to be a Polyglot event in Montreal? I was like, I think I know, <laughs> and <laughs> and just, no, no, there's a Facebook page for it. It was just, a, it, it, I mean, these two guys, uh, Joey and Tessa, they were just starting. <laughs> so uh, briefly after that, uh, I met with Joey and uh, and you know and got in touch with with Tetsu. So but it was also, I mean, and I understood they were accidental organizers <laughs> of the first edition of Minecraft as well, and I. Uh, I thought, well, that uh, it's a great project to join. I want to be an accidental organizer as well. <laughs> well, I mean, how many how many messages do we get after every event? People are going, I missed it. I just found out about the event. You know, we we get mm -hmm. that so much. And what Yiti said was, uh, you know, exactly the case. I think, you know, the biggest polyglot groups are like thirty thousand. You know, between thirty and thirty-five thousand people. And I think that's a lot of people on the one hand. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. People do not know that there are uh, gatherings uh, like this online or elsewhere you know, in physical uh, location like like our events. So it, it's got to be spread, uh, you know, as much as possible. And and there's just so many polyglots in the world, uh, even polyglots who don't know that they're polyglots, uh, and who yeah. have to realize that. I think that's, you know, that's a big. That. Uh, it, it, that, that's a, that's a big issue that people don't know that they can. Uh, there's other people who are interested in, in languages. Although in the case of the gathering, I think there was a little bit of a of, of, a, of a head start due to the uh, Esperanto uh, uh, base or background of Judith and Chuck because they had that uh, that uh, and of course it works for you as well that contact and uh, Chuck always tells me that he. When he and you and you did found the the gathering, they meant it uh, to be a uh, uh, an Esperanto event for non Esperanto speakers, <laughs> in a sense. <laughs> so they had that sort of model or experience in your mind. And having attended uh, Somera Esperanto Estudado, which is uh, uh, summer a uh, uh, summer event for uh, to learn Esperanto and also just to have fun, that uh, Peter's team has been has been organizing uh, for about, what, 10, 12 years, I know that the feel is, is similar. Uh, so, uh, and both are, both are great. Yeah, I totally agree. In fact, the, uh, the increasingly amount of participants also in the gathering and in, even in, in your uh, event uh, can show us that there is uh, a need for for such events. Uh, hopefully, also for for more such events uh, in in several countries or, or continents. Uh, so we would like to have it really a big event uh, this year as well. Uh, for example, in 2017, there was something like 460 or 70 people, and the last year we already had 538 people from 60 countries uh, and so hopefully this year maybe we can we can uh, make 600 who knows so hopefully uh, some of new people will uh, know about the event and uh, some let's say we can di discover this community to uh, some new polyglots uh, and new people uh, from from this community so uh, this this uh, shows that there is a need for such events so let's hope that uh, there could maybe appear a, a new uh, such events or that gathering and and langfest and, uh, and and polyglot conference would grow more and more actually in the future yeah what i love about you know our community is, is that you know we're all supportive of language learning we're all supportive of each other i mean our events are all, all supportive of mm. each other you know nobody's nobody's competing with anybody's precisely for the reason that you mentioned there's a big need uh, it's a huge huge population of people out there who need to know about us our events and uh what you know, the best thing we can do is is work together and uh and help each other out and support each other you know like this and and, and get the word out there yeah sometimes i think it's the best kept secret uh yeah. <laughs> I mean, people always say, like Tetsu said, you know, yeah. oh, I didn't know, la, la, la. in your case, and you're saying it too, and you guys, I mean, to us, you're very successful, I mean, you have so many people that come every year, but it's only the tip of the iceberg, I mean, 600 persons this year, I, I, I'm pretty confident that you're going to reach that target, because you've been growing every year, but still, that's only a very nominal amount of, of people in Europe, 
it's they're all so interconnected and close to one another. I think the the, the whole polyglot um, being a polyglot in Europe is much more uh, actual. It's much more uh, it's something that a lot of people actually are because you the countries are so close to one another and there's so many languages all around you that by default many people learn many languages. All right, I'm going to take one little minute here to, to say hello to our uh, viewers. Uh, we've got quite a few guys on, on the online watching us right now. You know, a good shout out to Mark, uh, to Miguel, to Peter, to Pendrick, uh, and Mathieu. Mathieu says, Coucou Nicolas. So, <laughs> and, and Peter and said, Mathieu. you know, if all of us speak Esperanto, we should do a little. Uh, conversation in Esperanto. I mean, unfortunately, I don't, but uh, it is not a problem at all. I think a lot of folks watching right now do want to hear some Esperanto. So at any time, Nicola, you can lead into a discussion in Esperanto for, for a few minutes. Odia parolas angle, sed fakte ni ankaŭ faras tiujn tujajn elsendojn en la franca kaj antaŭ kelkaj semajnoj ni ankaŭ faris en la hispana. Eble estontece ni uzas esperanton ankaŭ. So that's that's why. So I didn't roll out the use of esperanto in the future. So my my condolences to your dog that just died last week. Is that what you said? Absolutely. So, uh, oh, sorry. Did you want to go ahead? Uh, I, 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 I had a question about uh, this year's uh, gathering. Uh, is there anything that you're going to do differently in terms of, uh, you know, compared to past events? Because this is a, a thing. You know, we're we're at the same location. As well, we're in Montreal, so we find that we have to renew uh, the content uh, to keep people interested and keep people coming. Uh, you know, every year. And I, I was just wondering. Uh, because I don't think the program's out yet, but if you could maybe give us uh, some clues as to what your program will look like uh, this year. Uh, yeah, guys, so I actually, both Peter and me, we are like smiling now because this is exactly uh, a question that we expected that will come. So <laughs> thank you for asking it. <laughs> um, so yeah, the thing is that we're organizing it for the third time in Bratislava. However, as you know, you, you said we're planning some new things. Um, based for so for example based on the feedback that we got from last year when we introduced more talks in different languages mm -hmm. so we always try to make sure that we have at least one in english at every hour because there you know are some people who just prefer talks in english but at the same time uh from the feedback that we get from the participants they really loved to have talks in other languages Sometimes they would just go to a talk that is, you know, about Japan and about the Japanese language. And it would be, let's say, partly in English, partly in Japanese, because those people are expecting to learn some new words in there. Or we had some in uh, Spanish, French and so on, Russian. Um, so I would say this is, again, something that we try to do. But at the same time, some people are like, yeah, but please make sure there's always something in English. So we try to satisfy everyone to kind of make sure that we have covered everything. And uh, yeah, we're also going to have some new people. So as you know, Peter was saying, we are growing every year, which means we have new participants. Um, so also, this is what I really like that, like, even if you're completely new, you can still apply for being a speaker and come up with a new topic. So that every year we don't talk about the same things. Um, and uh, yeah, we're also planning one little surprise, but we don't want to uh, say this now at this point. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> you always um, need to keep your surprises, uh, you know, uh, hidden yeah, somewhere, yeah. otherwise they're not surprises. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I would say that what people loved in the last years, we're going to keep that. Plus, we're trying to always add on more stuff. For example, last year we also had some um, workshops that were not language related, you know, like some dancing or we had knitting or singing and stuff like that. And again, that's something that people loved because, you know, they can go to, let's say, four or five language related talks and then they just like to, I don't know, relax a bit and then dance or something. But while dancing, they practice the languages as well. So I would say the languages are kind of omnipresent. They are always there. 
but people like to, you know, do a lot of other stuff as well and move your body a little bit. So that's going to stay. And yeah, we're going to have some new workshops uh, on these topics as well. I think the, the social aspect is uh, something that uh, people have definitely noticed uh, as being a, a feature of the gathering and uh, a feature reminiscent, I have to say, of uh, Esperanto youth events, uh, which are also very big on, uh, on, on that kind of, uh, of social activities. But uh, you can definitely feel that in, in the gathering. I, I also remember that last year, maybe even in 2017, I don't remember, uh, there was a track uh, devoted to uh, language policy. Uh, it's something, you know, it's more serious, it's less social, but it's some, definitely something that uh, a lot of people have in mind, definitely something that, you know, in terms of, you know, being an Esperanto speaker, often something that that, that is of interest. Is that something that you're going to, to have again? Uh, or are you going to have another special track or special theme that, that you're going to, to put in the program? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this was actually my idea for the first gathering in, in Slovakia. We would like, so we, we wanted to, to make it something uh, different than the, as, as the previous in Berlin. And the idea was, uh, so as, as uh, Esperantist also, I am aware of, about these language issues and uh, language problems. Uh, so then we like presented the idea to have like panel discussion about language issues and uh, language policy, language discrimination, language democracy and so on. Uh, so now, yes, this year we would like also to make some, some special program for it. We have contacted some people already for it, but uh, we does, don't have the, 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 the names. Uh, ready for it but definitely probably on thursday already there will be like two three hours block uh, about language uh, related issues like really really not lang language related issues will be the, the whole gathering but language policy issues so linguistic discrimination democracy and, and so on uh, we plan also to work with the representation of European Commission in Slovakia as the last year. Uh, there was also one, speak, one talk uh, about these issues from, uh, from the representative uh, of them. Uh, but so th this year, uh, uh, even much uh, better this year, we have a good, uh, let's say, excuse for it as uh, uh, I think uh, United Nations or UNESCO declared uh, the year 2019 as a uh, year of indigenous languages. So this could be a good, uh, let's say, topic for uh, maybe even as a main topic for the gathering because we still plan uh, some 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 main features or, or some uh, special talks uh, to dedicate to some special um, topics. So yeah, definitely also people, if they are interested in uh, language policy, they will find something in, in the gathering. And about the social events, uh, the, the, the evening program uh, will be also uh, rich and we also plan some, some, some new features and some uh, multilingual concerts as well. Uh, we already have some new artists uh, contacted and if also, uh, if some, some uh, viewers now in Facebook or some participants have some ideas or are good artists, they can propose uh, own um, concert maybe or I don't know, jungling or, or, or magic show as, as the, the last year. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we can also talk about uh, the um, presentations uh, on stage during the gathering. In 2017, so the floor is open the for them. We had a pretty impressive magic show, right? Uh, I think it was right two years ago with the uh, the spikes and the glasses and you know scary stuff. <laughs> Could you tell us when when is a polyglot gatherings uh, poly polyglot gathering happening this year? What are the dates? So from uh, the 29th it, of May to the 2nd of June. So is, is it uh, the first day? Is a Thursday, if I'm not mistaken? Well, the first half day is a, is a Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday. First half day is a Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So okay, until the Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But the people, of course, they are welcome to stay several, some more days after, or to come earlier to Slovakia, or to discover the like middle or central Europe. Uh, and on Monday after the gathering, we all uh, we always uh, so this is also let's say already a tradition. We, we organize a small 
uh, unofficial picnic, so polyglot picnic in some new uh, nice park in, in Bratislava. So if the people don't have to uh, uh, fly uh, already from Bratislava, so stay till Monday and you can have uh, some some good time with, with the other mm -hmm. polyglots. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year we were maybe 50 people there, so it was, was quite fun. Cool. In 2017, I, uh, I participated in the picnic. Not last year, uh, I, I couldn't, but um, it was uh, it, it was fun indeed. It just a, a, a nice also uh, time to say bye to you know some of the participants that you don't have the time to, to see. Because I mean, you go to these events, you meet so many people. It gets embarrassing because sometimes you meet people that remember you, you don't remember them. Uh, I mean, we we have the same same uh, good problem, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but that's uh, it's definitely a. Uh, a feature of uh, of an event like that. Um, so, uh, well, there's one topic then that I think we uh, might want to talk about, but uh, I, I don't know if uh, how it would fit. But uh, I know b both of you are uh, all involved in various movements, not only the Pogot movement uh, and for you the Esperanto movement, uh, Peter, but also uh, the uh, uh, vegetarian. Uh, movement. I know that uh, in your options, uh, for food options, you include uh, vegetarian and, and, and vegan options. And uh, uh, certainly coming from Esperanto, we know that, uh, you know, vegetarianism is relatively common. Uh, we've noticed that also in the Pogba community, it tends to be relatively common. And this is something that uh, you pay attention to. So uh, maybe if you could you tell us a little bit what's going on there or what uh, how you you you, you you touch this so uh, cater to this need that uh, that some of the participants have. Mm -hmm. Iti, would you like to begin? Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, that's a very interesting topic, and I'm happy that you bring this up. I must say that, um, to be honest, it's quite a coincidence. So I'm a vegan uh, teacher mostly as well. So um, that's just that, you know, we have personal interest in that as well. But as you mentioned, it's also because people are asking for that as well. Like we can even see uh, in the signups for the lunches at the gathering. Uh, so for example, in last year, we had more signups for the vegan and vegetarian than the year before. And then you can really see that like year by year, people are more and more interested in that. And um, yeah, as you mentioned, it's also something that the polyglot community is really interested about because many people see the way we eat as something that you know affects the world, which actually is the case. Uh, I mean, I even work for a nonprofit organization here in Berlin that's dealing with this topic. So yes, I can confirm it, it really has an impact. Um, but yeah, at the same time, we're quite happy that people are interested in that. For example, last year I had a workshop on this topic. It was in Spanish. Um, and I mean, it was not even my idea to do a workshop about that. It was just really people like participants asking me like, hey, Yiti, we know this is your topic. Can you please do a workshop on that? So it's not that we try to push this on others. It's really the interest that is kind of showing us, OK, we should uh, touch on this topic because people want to know more. And if we have some information, we are always happy to share. Yeah, exactly. And it's actually not only about the food or only about the vegetarianism, but also about uh, ecology. In, in general, uh, for example, in in some Esperanto study, what I organized since 2007, so we already since 2008 we uh, introduced the idea of uh, bringing own cups for the coffee breaks, for example, or if oh, the people so don't have uh, some own cup uh, to take with uh, for for the flight or, or something, they can buy just a small uh, ceramic cup with with the uh, with some lo logo of, of the event, and then can then uh, they can use the, the cap for the whole uh, week uh, weekend. Uh, no, it's, it's a week, actually for the eight day, and then they can take it with uh, them as a kind of souvenir. Uh, and uh, in such manner, we already calculated uh, into it was 12 years uh, and 12 uh, studies with approximately 200 250 people that we saved more than 10,000 uh, plastic caps for example wow, only for that, the coffee that's breaks very good uh, mm. and that's plastic. the idea also now uh, during this uh, pilot gathering 
uh, we, we imagine that we have more than 500 people. If uh, each of them uh, would use only two cups per day, it's more than 1,000 cups uh, daily, and we have five days, so it's already uh, like 5,000 uh, cups for only one uh, meeting. So that's also the idea. When we already last year, we uh, bought 100% uh, biodegradable cups. Uh, it's uh, no plastic inside, so also not only cups, but also the teaspoons, for example, and so on. And we ask the participants also to sign the cups. So if, even if it's ecologically biodegradable, but please use it during the four or five days. It's not a problem. So you can always find your cup on the table uh, nearby the coffee, uh, coffee break uh, place and then uh, like refill your, uh, your cup and use it in, in such manner. So we trying to avoid uh, like misusing of or, or to, to, to live a little bit more ecologically. Uh, even with the um, uh, foot, uh, uh, footprint of the, let's say, the traveling for the gathering, uh, we cannot avoid uh, from, from, I don't know, Australia or, or US. Yes. Uh, it's not so easy to, to travel ecologically, but uh, at least in, in such uh, small steps, we, we can act uh, more, let's say, you know, with, with more ecological uh, approach. That's absolutely fantastic. Wow. I mean, my respect. Uh, we should think about something like that, uh, Joey and, and Nicola. Yeah. It's, uh, we'll talk about it. It's, it's, if all of our, our events do this, you know, it's good for the, the, the ecology and it's good for our planet. Uh, definitely, we should, we should do that. It's so, a trend for all events, uh, no matter yeah. the topic. I mean, it's, it's, it's really becoming more and more common. So, uh, well, um, we could go on for a long, long time, but uh, it is time to, to think about wrapping it up. Uh, and we will usually go into uh, a question about how, uh, w what are your thoughts on, uh, well, this year, next year, the, the, the mid to long term future of, uh, of the polyglot gathering, uh, and, and what is, you know, in the future for you guys personally? We have a, we have a few minutes we can do that. Iti? Um, well, so <laughs> we discussed this already with Peter before, so I, I can imagine that another question would be where is the polyglot gathering going to take place next mm -hmm. year? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as Peter was saying, it was for three years in Berlin, now the third year in Bratislava. So of course, next year we're going to move it somewhere else. Wow. Okay, um, so everyone is excited, good. which that's is good. cool. Um, however, for many, many practical reasons, we decided to keep it most probably in Central Europe still, because, okay. you know, the team is based in here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for many other reasons, people actually like traveling in here because it's easy for mo many of them. You know, you have a lot of big cities with big airports around. Um, so yes, but we're, we still don't know which of the countries it's going to be. We are in touch with some of the venue owners. Um, but yeah, it's too early now to make any confirmations. But yeah, a new location definitely is coming up. So wow. it will bring a lot of new stuff, new trips, new topics. So yeah, I'm, I'm personally very really excited. <laughs> this is going to be announced, I guess, when you've finished your conference this year, or you don't think that you'll have that information yet? Uh, we hope to discover the place during the gathering in Belarus. Yeah. <laughs> yes. and yeah, and so about the, the plans, so we hope that the gathering will, will grow uh, with the participants and also with, the, let's say, the, the content. Maybe in, in some, some day or uh, in the future, it could be even for a whole week event, uh, as, for example, the, the basic idea or, or the... A little bit of a technical issue. Yeah, I think we lost you, Peter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay well, me meanwhile, uh, before we uh, before we say our adieu, uh, we do have a little question from Chanel asking whether Polyglot Gathering will be streamed online. Do you guys think you will be doing that? Oh, that's a very good question. Unfortunately, people just disappeared. Um, <laughs> the guy to answer the yeah. question is gone. Uh, well, uh, I didn't anyway. want to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> the question is in the comments. Perhaps you could follow up with Chanel uh, 
uh, in the post. Uh, but otherwise, oh, it's a you know it's a fantastic pleasure to to have you guys on, and uh, you know all our best wishes for the Polyglot gathering. Uh, hopefully, we could you know catch up again just before or right after your event, uh, and, uh, and and do some follow up. Yeah. Uh, it, it was fun. It was very weird to speak in English to uh, uh, for I think uh, the first time I came, it's not the first time I hear him speak, the first time, because a common language is Esperanto. Petro said, how does it mean? Salut has been, but now that we are still for the Gita, we are in the Laubia Volo, de la Tuya El Sendo, so this. Yeah. Just we have 45 five seconds I, left. I just want to make sure that, that we uh, tell people the dates again. So it's May 29th, is that it? To June 2nd? Yes, May 29th to June 2nd. It's going to be in Bratislava. If they want to buy tickets, they go to polyglot gallery. Polyglotbratislava.com. It's, yes. polyglot it's in the description. Bratislava.com. It's in yeah, the description. But if they put polyglotgathering.com, it's going to redirect them to the same page. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you, Yudi. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.